Test control, you are go for Excel to Mach 1.1. There we are. XB-1 is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. The first civil aircraft Control. independently constructed that has ever flown supersonic. Wow, that was fantastic. Doesn't she look gorgeous? Especially when the gear's up, she looks an absolutely beautiful airplane. And in the pilot's world, we say that if an aircraft looks right, she'll fly right. And XB-1 certainly yeah, looks right. Harder. Today was just a, a huge, huge day. This is uh, the first civilian supersonic flight in 22 years. Uh, the first time a civil supersonic jet built in America has uh, broken the sound barrier. And also the, the first time a civil supersonic jet has been built outside of a nation state. We were a little disappointed there was no boom. Um, uh, uh, at, in today's flight conditions, we only thought there was about a 10% chance uh, that there was an audible boom. And there was, there was a lot of cheering, but no sonic boom. And Test control, you are go for Excel to Mach 1.1. Go for Excel, Castro Gate. Castro Gate, go for Excel. So this is the really exciting part. Watch the mount number in the middle of the screen. Space one, full gate. Three engines and afterburner. Mach number's ticking up. There so, we are. XB-1 is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. Control We've got confirmation from the control room that it, she is supersonic. What a wonderful achievement. Geppetto and the whole team know what a really historic moment this is. The first civil aircraft control. independently constructed that has ever flown supersonic. And Geppetto is the first pilot ever to do it. It is really thrilling moment. And we can see her right now watching her. Nick, how do you feel? Fantastic. Mike, I've been working on this program for years. Not just me. So many people have poured years worth of effort into this moment and to just think that this is the first civil supersonic aircraft in American history. I'm just, I'm to the moon uh, excited about how well that went. We saw the Mach number lingering there a little bit. It kind of paused at 0.97. We actually expected that. We talked about that in this morning's brief, uh, how sometimes the air data doesn't really know what to do with that onset of the shock wave when it actually hits Mach 1. But then it, it came back. It, uh, we saw 0.04, I think, was the first indication. But here we are at Mach 1, 1.1. Uh, 1. Airplane looks great, and they're into testing. Flying supersonically, what the, what's the experience like? Well, from my experience on Concorde, there's absolutely no physical sensation once you're supersonic. There's also no physical sensation of going through the sound barrier. When a plane's traveling at faster than the speed of sound, and today it's up around about 770 miles per hour, you really don't realize it. And yet, today, for instance, uh, XB-1 is traveling so quickly that a distance like that between, say, San Diego, and San Diego and Los Angeles could be covered in just a mere 10 minutes. She's actually far, flying faster than the Earth rotates. She's going so quickly that, that the sun is going literally backwards in the sky. It's quite an amazing experience. And yet that's the really clever thing that the aviation engineers succeed in doing, to make the experience so that... Uh, an aircraft can do all of this while the passengers are just sitting in comfort and even sometimes they have to put indicators in the cabin to make sure that the customers do know that the aircraft is flying supersonically. Today we have one of the, the silliest 
rules in the world, which is you can't fly supersonic over land, uh, no matter how quiet the airplane is. And so we are, you know, we're picking up where Concord left off. Uh, initially, we'll fly right under the speed of sound over land, which is still 20% faster than a Boeing or Airbus. And over the water, we'll open up the throttles and go twice as fast. And that means that uh, already there are about 600 of the routes, uh, 600 routes around the planet that will benefit from big speed ups. The, the longest flight flights in the world tend to be the ones that are transoceanic. So that's where we're starting. Uh, so I, I don't think there's any question of whether passengers want faster flights. I don't know a single one who wants to spend more time on an airplane, provided that the, the flight is a, a, affordable and safe and convenient and comfortable. Um, and I don't, uh, and, and the airlines have you know, spoken with their their money that they, they want supersonic flights because yeah, half a century after Concord, we have that the technology not just to go fast, but to do it in a way that's economically viable, that's profitable. Um, and really, the question the question remaining was, can we do it? And um, you know, I, we've known theoretically you know, inside the company for a long time we could, and you know, today I think we've shown the world we can. And and now it's now it's time. You know, today we'll celebrate. Tomorrow we get back to work. It's time to scale up, and and uh, to go build the version that you and I get to fly on. You know, XP-1, much like the Concorde, when flying on approach uh, at slow speeds, their very nose high, even though they're descending. So that nose is sort of in the way and blocks the runway. So we actually have two cameras on the on the nose gear. So when the gear come down, the pilot will have the use of these cameras. The cameras are purely redundant. Uh, so if there's any, you know, we have an issue, if there was a, uh, you know, in the way off chance that we ever had a bird strike, uh, if one of them hit a camera, <laughs> we'd have a second camera there that the pilot could utilize. Uh, and so basically, if, if, if Geppetto on approach could see through the airplane, he would naturally be looking down through his multifunction display, and that's where the camera displays. And so he is actually flying on a video Test screen. Control, expect a fuel low momentarily continue. And that is one of the, that, you know, that is one of the, uh, it, that is one of the technologies that will carry over to the to the overture aircraft as well. Cuts out a lot of weight, a lot of complexity, uh, with you know having a giant mechanism just to move a nose. Uh, now we have high resolution Test displays and small an cameras. So on glide slope, on center line, fifty feet, on center line, forty, on center line, thirty, twenty, ten, five, three. And she's down, right on the numbers. Absolutely beautiful. Right on the numbers, right on the center line. And I'm going to turn around and watch her roll out down the runway. What a beautiful sight. And what a really successful day. Good breaks. Awesome. Getting a little bit of a flyby from the T-38 and the, the Mirage F-1. And Geppetto's parts are right on the numbers, right outside the hangar here. And as you can see, or we can see here, people are gathering the cameras, video cameras. They're all coming back from the park line where they were watching the flight. A drone flying past the aircraft to give really good views of the whole aircraft. And I think I actually caught a smile there from Geppetto at that very moment. And you can see the ground crew just getting to work, you know, immediately uh, securing the aircraft. Um, again, we want to maintain this as a healthy test asset, obviously. 
Uh, they'll do another inspection. Uh, so engines are off right now, uh, mercifully. Um, it's a little bit quiet out here, but the uh, the um, you know they're going to do a walk around of the aircraft, to make sure there's see if there's anything that they need to get a start on before the next mission. And there's that moment. I don't know if you can hear me on the mic, but uh, Geppetto just stepped out of the cockpit, uh, getting that hero shot there, coming down the ramp. And our CEO, Blake Scholl, is about to meet Geppetto uh, and shake hands uh, after a successful mission. No, I had to, do it, had to, get, had to get three of them in there for you. Three yeah. in there, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, you are uh, the fastest civil pilot alive. Well, thanks, Blake. Thanks for putting together this incredible team who built an incredible aircraft. Uh, she was real happy supersonic, and that's the best That's the best she's ever flown was supersonic. That's awesome. Well, congratulations, and well done. Thank you. Thank you. Because it's time, to, it's time to go big. It's time to take this little airplane made out of airliner technology and scale it up. It's time to bring supersonic flight back. It's time to bring it back for all of us. It's time to bring it back in a mainstream way. And we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop until everyone can benefit from this. From the president to every family, to make the world a smaller place, to bring humanity closer together. Let's make America boom again. Thank you very much. <laughs>